Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta. This one is about Fredman miking technique. Welcome to my guitar cabinet booth. So what is a Fredman miking technique? Well, it's a technique where you put two 57s in front of a speaker in a certain angle. And the right way to do it is by using the official Fredman clip which is Fredman here. There is some others available, not the official Fredman clips, and according to Frederick, the angle is wrong on those. It's close, but it's not the Fredman technique. The angle has to be right. I can't remember what it was, but uh, the original Fredman clip is the only right way. So what you do, hopefully you can see this, the two 57s here, they both have Triton Audios, Fethead Germanium preamps in their RCs. So this gives a bit more gain and also the Germanium kind of, you know, JFET vibe, kind of a little bit mojo. So the way I do it is, I'm going to put pictures because you're probably not going to see. So here's where is the, the line on the 57. I put it so that it's actually here, exactly here. Then the other, same way, like this. And by doing this, they are pretty much almost touching each other's, the microphones. So the angle is it's like this. Then what you do, I have marked here a spot. What is the sweet spot? You put the mic that is supposed to be direct, you put it just to the, exactly to the center of the speaker. And then this one will be the angle one. And this one you should put as close as the, as possible to the grill, but so that it doesn't touch. And this creates a certain angle and because now with this one they are different le length from the speaker, so it, it creates kind of like a face issue thing, but with this technique it's actually supposed to do that. We'll get into that later. And if you don't have, you know, these kind of markings, what I have to the sweet spots on the cabinet, then just, you know, grab a phone or a flashlight and see that it's exactly, this one is facing dead center, so then with the clip this one automatically is in the right place. Okay, now let's listen a song I actually used on my previous video. I re-recorded the guitars with this technique. So the, the speaker is a Marshall Windage speaker, the original Windage 30 speaker. This one is brand new, but it's starting to be broken in. I played it with a, with a few weeks, like every day, so it starts to kind of loosen up. So. I will use, obviously, the Marshall cabinet with the Marshall Windage speaker and then two amplifiers, Marshall JC Main, Hardwick 2203, aka the Bad Boy, and my old 5150 Black Letter. All right, let's listen to the song and then discuss about this a bit more.
I used a Marshall JG800, aka the Bad Boy, boosted with Bass SD1, and on the right track, the rhythm track, I doubled after, afterwards. I used a 5150 boosted with 808 and the Fredman mic technique. So if we look at the screen, we see here the mic one, that's the what is directly, you know, to the center of the speaker, and the mic two is the the angle one. If you listen only the mic one. Yeah, it's quieter, but... It's, you know, captures the full speaker, but there's a lot of that. And then this angled mic, it sounds like... Very dark. But when they are together... What happens there is suddenly when I blended in that angled mic, that disappeared. So check out when I took the angled out of face. The other. So this is what uh, kind of is taken away when you have those mics in that specific angle mic, that specific way. Because the straight mic is a little bit further away than the angled mic. So there's a little bit of a face issue. So that nasty is taken away. I switch to 4 album on the singles, I used both. I did like quad track, so four rhythm guitars, 800 Bad Boy on the left and fifth one on the left, and same on the right. But now for this song, we're gonna check the mix soon. I, I just used uh, one guitar, so the Bad Boy was on the left and the solo, and fifth one fifty on the on the right. On the way in, I usually use this, so a little bit low cut, high cut, low cut at 56 hertz and uh, high cut at 11 point. 2K just to remove the boo -boo 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 and a really high top end. That is the idea of, of the Fredman technique. And as you can see here, I have this a little bit different incoming gain. So the idea is that you check these, they're appro approximately the same. Then the technique works like it, it should. So many times, at least in my experience, I need to gain the angled microphone a little bit more so then the kind of the face thing and everything it, it just works like a like a charm all right then let's check out the mix briefly what i did what i what i used and what not next all right so let's go to cubase so let's listen the mix and then i solo the guitars and bass and whatnot So with bass, I boosted the uh, 5K quite a bit. It sounds a little bit on its own, but in the mix it works. And on the main bass track, I used the Bullgrain's bass knob, which is this. Set like this, and then Waves R bass, just to add a little bit more bottom. And there was no EQ, and then the Fed com 1176 Fed compressor, just a little bit to to jam it down. You heard it just makes the bass a bit more even because you don't want it to jump around. 
cool, okay? Then a uh, guitars. As you can hear, you know, the bass brings the low end, not the guitars. So what I have on the individual channels, nothing going on except the, the drive when it's set to five. It's, it's like you get the kind of the SSL, you know, original analog discs, discs, mixer, mixing disc drive. Nothing on the angled mic, 5150, nothing on, on the straight, direct straight mic, nothing on the angled mic, bus, nothing. Oh, I didn't do anything to the guitars. Sounds great. Cool. Okay, lead guitar. Nothing on the one first mic, nothing on the second mic, lead guitar, bass, no EQ, a little bit of uh, the SSL channel strip compressor, let me show you. It doesn't do much, it just makes it a little bit more even because you know I really sometimes hit really hard. I mean it's distorted this compressor in the first place. It's compressing, but uh, usually with with uh, lead guitars, I, I like to add a, a little bit of so it, it kind of makes it more more even and more upfront. So <laughs> that's the that's the stuff I did. So pretty much the only thing with guitars, the the it's coming from the from the mix bus. And if I bypass the mix bus. You know, it, it will be quieter, but let me show you. If I bypass the, the cramp, So, as you heard, it kind of glues it a little bit. There's not much compression going on. There's not much going on in the, in the mix. And, and uh, adds a little bit bottom. And, well, while we're at it, let me show you what happens. First, I'm going to bypass the, the vintage drive and put it. It adds volume, but it also kind of adds this nice thick, thick thing. And then the violet e EQ. Tiny amount, but in the mix bus, I don't I want to do it too much. I just want to add a little bit of mojo in the in the mix bus because the you know, main things happening happens with the individual tracks. So the mix bus is just, you know, it makes my work easier. That's it for the mix. Like I said, the Fredman miking technique is, is really good when, when you do it right, when you use the right angle, the and you can get that really easily with the original official Fredman clip. I'm not sure if they sell that any anymore, but uh you know maybe you can send him an email or contact them via their website that if, if they're still available. I got this from from Frederick or our mutual friend Frederick gave it to him and he gave it to me a while ago and I've been using this so much lately. It just works when you when you do it right. Okay one final listen. Fifty Marshall Both All right.
that was the frame and miking technique. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative stronger recommendation for you know metal guitars, rock, rock guitars. And like I said, when you do it right, you know, that's many times it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, all the best. Take care. Bye.